The Portuguese Restoration War Portuguese, Guerra da Restauração, Spanish, Guerra de Restauración Portuguesa was the name given by 19th-century Romantic historians to the war between Portugal and Spain that began with the Portuguese Revolution of 1640 and ended with the Treaty of Lisbon in 1668. The Portuguese and Catalan Revolutions of 1640 ended the 60-year Iberian Union. The period from 1640 to 1668 was marked by periodic skirmishes between Portugal and Spain, as well as short episodes of more serious warfare, much of it occasioned by Spanish and Portuguese entanglements with non-Iberian powers. Spain was involved in the Thirty Years' War until 1648 and the Franco-Spanish War until 1659, while Portugal was involved in the Dutch-Portuguese War until 1663. In the 17th century and afterwards, this period of sporadic conflict was simply known, in Portugal and elsewhere, as the Acclamation War. The war established the House of Braganza as Portugal's new ruling dynasty, replacing the House of Habsburg. This ended the so-called Iberian Union. <inaudible> <inaudible> Events leading to revolution when Philip II of Portugal Philip III of Spain died, he was succeeded by his son Philip III, who had a different approach to Portuguese issues. Taxes on the Portuguese merchants were raised, the Portuguese nobility began to lose its influence at the Spanish Cortes, and government posts in Portugal were increasingly occupied by Spaniards. Ultimately, Philip III tried to make Portugal a Spanish province, and Portuguese nobles stood to lose all of their power. This situation culminated in a revolution organized by the nobility and bourgeoisie, executed on 1 December 1640, 60 years after the crowning of Philip I Philip II of Spain, the first dual monarch. The plot was planned by Antão Vaz de Almada, Miguel de Almeida, and João Pinto Ribeiro. They, together with several associates, known as the Forty Conspirators, killed the Secretary of State, Miguel de Vasconcelos, and imprisoned the king cousin, Margaret of Savoy, who had been governing Portugal in his name. The moment was well chosen, Philip's troops were, at the time, fighting the Thirty Years' War and also facing a revolution in Catalonia which became known as the Reapers' War. The support of the people became apparent almost immediately, and, within a matter of hours, Philip III's sixth cousin John, 8th Duke of Braganza was acclaimed as King John IV of Portugal. The news spread like wildfire throughout the country. By 2 December 1640, the day following the coup, John IV, acting in his capacity as sovereign of the country, had already sent a letter to the Municipal Chamber of Évora. The ensuing conflict with Spain brought Portugal into the Thirty Years' War as, at least, a peripheral player. From 1641 to 1668, the period during which the two nations were at war, Spain sought to isolate Portugal militarily and diplomatically, and Portugal tried to find the resources to maintain its independence through political alliances and maintenance of its colonial income. Topic. Preparations for war Topic. Immediately after assuming the Portuguese throne, João IV took several steps to strengthen his position. On the 11th of December 1640, a council of war was created to organize all of the operations. Next, the king created the Junta of the Frontiers to take care of the fortresses near the border, the hypothetical defense of Lisbon, and the garrisons and seaports. A year later, in December 1641, he created a tenancy to assure that all of the country's fortresses would be upgraded and that the improvements would be financed with regional taxes. João IV also organized the army, re-established the military laws of King Sebastian, and undertook a diplomatic campaign focused on restoring good relations with England. After gaining several small victories, João tried to make peace quickly. However, his demand that Philip recognize the new ruling dynasty in Portugal was not fulfilled until the reign of his son, Afonso VI, during the regency of Peter of Braganza another of his sons who later became King Peter II of Portugal. Confrontations with Spain lasted 28 years. Topic. Context, relations among the European powers Topic. Topic. Relations between France and Spain Topic. 
In 1640, Cardinal Richelieu, the chief advisor to Louis XIII of France, was fully aware of the fact that France was operating under strained circumstances. Louis was at war with Spain at that time, he had to control rebellions within France that were supported and financed by Madrid, and he had to send French armies to fight the Spanish Habsburgs on three different fronts. In addition to their shared frontier at the Pyrenees, Philip IV of Spain, formerly Philip III of Portugal as well, reigned, under various titles, in Flanders and the Francia Comte, to the north and east of France. In addition, Philip IV controlled large territories in Italy, where he could, at will, impose a fourth front by attacking French controlled Savoy. In Savoy, Christine Marie of France was acting as regent on behalf of her young son, Charles Emmanuel II, Duke of Savoy. Spain had enjoyed the reputation of having the most formidable military force in Europe, with the introduction of the arquebus and the so called Spanish school. This reputation and tactic had, however, diminished with the Thirty Years' War. Nevertheless, the consummate statesman, Richelieu, decided to force Philip IV to look to his own internal problems. In order to divert the Spanish troops besieging France, Louis XIII, on the advice of Richelieu, supported the claim of João IV of Portugal during the Acclamation War. This was done on the reasoning that a Portuguese war would drain Spanish resources and manpower. Topic. Relations between Portugal and France Topic. To fulfill the common foreign policy interests of Portugal and France, a treaty of alliance between the two countries was concluded at Paris on 1 June 1641. It lasted 18 years before Richelieu's successor as unofficial foreign minister, Cardinal Mazarin, broke the treaty and abandoned his Portuguese and Catalan allies to sign a separate peace with Madrid. The Treaty of the Pyrenees was signed in 1659, under the terms of which France received the portion of Catalonia north of the Pyrenees, known as the Roussillon, and part of the Sardinia French Sardinia. Most important to the Portuguese, the French recognized Philip IV of Spain as the legitimate king of Portugal. Seven years later, in the late stages of the Portuguese Restoration War, relations between the two countries thawed to the extent that the young but sickly Afonso VI of Portugal married a French princess, Marie-Francoise of Namur. Topic. Relations between Portugal and the Dutch Republic Topic. At the time of the revolution in Lisbon, the 1st of December 1640, the Portuguese had been at war with the Dutch for nearly 40 years. A good deal of the conflict can be attributed to the fact that Spain and the Dutch Republic were concurrently engaged in the Eighty Years' War (1568–1648), and ever since hostilities between Portugal and the Dutch Republic erupted in 1602, Portugal had been ruled by a Spanish monarch. The Dutch-Portuguese War was fought almost entirely overseas, with the Dutch mercantile surrogates, the Dutch East India Company and the Dutch West India Company, repeatedly attacking Portugal's colonial possessions in the Americas, in Africa, in India, and in the Far East. Portugal was in a defensive posture throughout, and it received very little military help from Spain. After the acclamation of João IV, this pattern persisted all over the Portuguese Empire until the final expulsion of the Dutch from Angola 1648, São Tomé 1649, and Brazil 1654. The Dutch signed a European truce with Portugal, helping each other somewhat against their common enemy, Spain. The Dutch resumed buying salt in the Setubal salt factories, restarting commerce between the two countries for the first time since 1580, when the Spanish branch of the Habsburgs, against whom the Dutch were in revolt, had assumed the Portuguese throne. However, Dutch attacks on Portuguese territories persisted until 1663, even after the signing of the Treaty of The Hague in 1661. Topic. Relations between Portugal and England Topic. England was, at this time, embroiled in its own civil war. Portuguese problems in dealing with England arose from the fact that the English Parliament fought and won its anti-royalist war while, at the same time, Portugal's royal court continued to receive and recognize English princes and nobles. These strained relations persisted during the short-lived Commonwealth period, when the Republican government that had deposed Charles I ruled England and then Ireland and Scotland. After the restoration of the Stuart dynasty, it became possible for Portugal to compensate for the lack of French support by renewing its alliance with England. 
This took the form of a dynastic marriage between Charles II and Afonso VI's sister, Catherine of Braganza, which assured Portugal of outside support in its conflict with Spain. The English alliance helped peace with Spain, since Spain had been drained by the Thirty Years' War, and it had no stomach for further warfare with other European powers, especially a resurgent England. War Militarily, the Portuguese Restoration War consisted mainly of border skirmishes and cavalry raids to sack border towns, combined with occasional invasions and counter-invasions, many of them half-hearted and under-financed. There were only five major set-piece battles during 28 years of hostilities. The war may be considered to have had three periods. First, an early stage 1640 when a few major engagements demonstrated that the Portuguese could not be easily returned to submission to the Spanish Habsburgs. Second, a long period 1646 of military standoffs, characterized by small-scale raiding, while Spain concentrated on its military commitments elsewhere in Europe. Third, a final period 1660 during which the Spanish king, Philip IV, unsuccessfully sought a decisive victory that would bring an end to hostilities. First stage, battles Hoping for a quick victory in Portugal, Spain immediately committed seven regiments to the Portuguese frontier, but delays by the Count of Monterey, a commander with more interest in the comforts of life at camp than the battlefield, squandered any immediate advantage. A Portuguese counter-thrust in late 1641 failed, and the conflict soon settled into a stalemate. <laughs> Battle of Montillo on 26 May 1644, a large column of Spanish troops and mercenaries, commanded by the Neapolitan Marquis of Torricusa, was stopped at the Battle of Montillo by the Portuguese, who were led by the Matias de Albuquerque, one of a number of experienced Portuguese colonial officers who rose to prominence during the war. <laughs> First Siege of Elvis Shortly thereafter, in November 1644, Torricusa crossed from Badajoz, in a rare winter campaign, to attack the Portuguese town of Elvis, which he besieged for nine days. He suffered heavy losses and was forced back across the border. <laughs> Atrocities The war now took on a peculiar character. It became a frontier confrontation, often between local forces, neighbors who knew each other well, but this familiarity did not moderate the destructive and bloodthirsty impulses of either side. The wanton nature of the combat was often exacerbated by the use of mercenaries and foreign conscripts. Incidents of singular cruelty were reported on both sides. The Portuguese settled old animosities that had festered during 60 years of Spanish domination, and the Spanish often took the view that their opponents were disloyal and rebellious subjects, not an opposing army entitled to respectful treatment under the rules of combat. Topic. Scope of the war Topic. Three theaters of warfare were eventually opened, but most activity focused on the northern front, near Galicia, and on the central frontier between Portuguese Alentejo and Spanish Extremadura. The southern front, where the Portuguese Algarve abuts Spanish Andalusia, was a logical target for Portugal, but it was never the focus of a Portuguese attack, probably because the Portuguese queen, Luisa de Guzman, was the sister of the Duke of Medina Sidonia, the leading noble of Andalusia. Attrition and corruption Topic. Spain, at first, made the war a defensive one. Portugal, for its part, felt no need to take Spanish territory in order to win, and it too was willing to make the war a defensive contest. Campaigns typically consisted of carrerias cavalry raids to burn fields, sack towns, and steal large herds of enemy cattle and sheep. Soldiers and officers, many of them mercenaries, were primarily interested in booty and prone to desertion. 
For long periods, without men or money, neither side mounted formal campaigns, and when actions were taken, they were often driven as much by political considerations, such as Portugal's need to impress potential allies, as by clear military objectives. Year after year, given the problems of campaigning in the winter, and the heat and dry conditions of summer, most of the serious fighting was confined to two relatively short campaign seasons in the spring and fall. The war settled into a pattern of mutual destruction. As early as December 1641, it was common to hear Spaniards throughout the country lament that Extremadura is finished. Tax collectors, recruiting officers, billeted soldiers, and depredations by Spanish and foreign troops were loathed and feared by the Spanish population as much as raids by the enemy. In Extremadura, local militias bore the brunt of the fighting until 1659, and the absence of these part-time soldiers was extremely harmful to agriculture and local finances. Since there was often no money to pay or support the troops or to reward their commanders, the Spanish crown turned a blind eye to the smuggling, contraband, profiteering, disorder, and destruction that had become rampant on the frontier. Similar conditions also existed among the Portuguese. Topic. Second stage, defensive standoff Topic. The war was also expensive. In the 1650s, there were over 20,000 Spanish troops in Extremadura alone, compared to 27,000 in Flanders. Between 1649 and 1654, about 29% over 6 million of Spanish defense spending was appropriated for fighting Portugal, a figure that rose during the major campaigns of the 1660s. Portugal was able to finance its war effort because of its ability to tax the spice trade with Asia and the sugar trade from Brazil, and it received some support from the European opponents of Spain, particularly France and England. The 1650s were indecisive militarily but important on the political and diplomatic fronts, with the brief exception of the Battle of the Lines of Elvas in 1659. The death of João IV in 1656 signaled the beginning of the regency of his wife, followed by a succession crisis and a palace coup 1662. Despite these domestic problems, the expulsion of the Dutch from Brazil 1654 and the signing of a treaty with England also in 1654 improved Portugal's diplomatic and financial position temporarily and gave it needed protection against a naval raid on Lisbon. Nonetheless, the overriding goal, a formal pact with France continued to evade Portugal, whose weakness and isolation had been driven home by its virtual exclusion at the negotiations for the European Settlement of Settlements, the new realpolitik of the Peace of Westphalia 1648. With this treaty and the end of hostilities in Catalonia in 1652, Spain was again ready to direct its efforts against Portugal, but it faced a lack of men, resources, and, especially, good military commanders. Topic. Third stage, Portuguese victory Topic. By 1662, Spain had committed itself to a major effort to end the war. John of Austria the Younger, Philip IV's illegitimate son, led 14,000 men into Alentejo, and, the following year, they succeeded in taking Évora, the major city of the region. The Portuguese, under Antonio Luís de Meneses, 1st Marquess of Marialva were bolstered by the arrival of a British brigade which numbered 3,000 in August 1662. Many were veterans of the English Civil War and the Dutch Revolt. They were led by the Gemin soldier of fortune, Friedrich Hermann von Schoenberg, Count of Mertola, the brigade under Schomburg's leadership, proved a decisive factor in winning back Portugal. S. Independence, they defeated the Spanish in a major engagement at Amixiel on 8 June 1663, and this forced John of Austria to abandon Évora and retreat across the border with heavy losses. The Portuguese now had some 30,000 troops in the Alentejo Extremadura theater, but they could not draw the Spanish again into a major engagement until June 1665, when a new Spanish commander, the Marquis of Caracena, took over Vila Vicosa with about 23,000 men, including recruits from Germany and Italy. The Portuguese relief column under Antonio Luis de Meneses and Schomburg met them at Montes Claros on 17 June 1665. The Portuguese infantry and artillery emplacements broke the Spanish cavalry, and the Spanish force lost over 10,000 men, including casualties and prisoners. Shortly thereafter, the Portuguese retook Vila Vicosa. These were the last major engagements of the war. 
Both sides returned to skirmishing campaigns. Portugal, with the intercession of its English ally, had sought a truce, but after the decisive Portuguese victory at Montes Claros and with the signing of a Franco-Portuguese treaty in 1667, the Spanish Habsburgs finally agreed to recognize the House of Braganza as Portugal's new ruling dynasty on 13 February 1668. Recapitulation the five major battles of the war were Battle of Montillo on 26 May 1644 Battle of the Lines of Elvis on 14 January 1659 Battle of Amixiel on 8 June 1663 Battle of Castelo Rodrigo on 7 July 1664 Battle of Montes Claros on the 17th of June 1665 the Portuguese were victorious in almost all of these engagements and peace was concluded with the help of English mediation by the Treaty of Lisbon in 1668 Topic timeline Topic 1640, a small group of conspirators stormed the royal palace in Lisbon and deposed the vicereign of Portugal, Margaret of Savoy on 1 December 1640. She, famously, tried to calm the Portuguese people during demonstrations in the Torero do Paco, at the time, Lisbon's main square, but her efforts failed. The Duke of Braganca, head of the senior family among the Portuguese nobility, accepted the throne as João IV of Portugal later the same day. João IV's entire reign was dominated by the struggle to maintain Portuguese independence. 1641, a counter-revolution mounted by the Inquisition failed. It was quelled by Francisco de Lucina, who had its leaders executed. Miguel Luis de Menezes, second Duke of Camina, was executed for continuing to support the Habsburgs' claim to the Portuguese throne. 1641, Portugal signed alliances with France, the 1st of June 1641, and Sweden, August 1641. 1641, Portugal and the Dutch Republic signed a Treaty of Offensive and Defensive Alliance, otherwise known as the Treaty of the Hague, on the 12th of July 1641. The treaty was not respected by either party. As a consequence, it had no effect on the Portuguese dependencies of Brazil and Angola that were under Dutch occupation. 1641, the Dutch began their occupation of São Tomé and of Año Bom on 16 October 1641, where they remained until 6 January 1649. This was clearly a violation of the agreement made with Portugal only three months earlier. 1641, Portugal was ousted from Malacca by the Dutch. 1642, the Dutch took over all of the Portuguese Gold Coast now Ghana. 1643, at the Battle of Roqua, the 19th of May 1643, in the Ardennes, the French defeated the Spanish. 1644, the Battle of Montillo near Badajoz, between the Portuguese and the Spanish, was fought on the 26th of May 1644. 1644, the Portuguese city of Elvas withstood a nine-day siege by Spanish troops. 1648, the Sultan of Oman, in alliance with the Dutch, captured Muscat, which had been a Portuguese trading outpost on the Arabian Peninsula. 1648, Portuguese troops from the colony of Brazil under Salvador Cojea de Sá landed in Angola, retook Luanda, and expelled the Dutch, thereby restoring the African colony to Portugal. 1649, the Dutch were ousted from São Tomé. 1654, the Anglo-Portuguese treaty between João IV and Oliver Cromwell was signed at Westminster. João agreed to prevent the molestation of English traders in Portugal and its possessions, they were allowed to use their own Bible and to bury their dead according to Protestant rites even though they were on Catholic soil. 1654, Portuguese troops from the colony of Brazil drove the Dutch out of the great plantation colonies of northeastern Brazil, re-establishing the territorial integrity of Portugal's South American holdings. 1656, Portugal lost control of Colombo in Portuguese Ceylon to the Dutch. 1656, João IV died on 6 November 1656 after a reign of 15 years. His queen, who was born Luisa de Guzman (1613–1666), the eldest daughter of the Spanish grandee, the Duke of Medina Sidonia, then reigned as regent for their son, Afonso VI of Portugal. She began seeking an accommodation with Spain. 
1658, the Dutch took Jafnipatam, Portugal's last colony in Ceylon. 1659, the Battle of the Lines of Elvis was fought on 14 January 1659. Portuguese troops, under the command of the Marquis of Marialva, Antonio Luis de Meneses, and Sancho Manuel de Valena, scored a resounding victory over the Spanish. 1659, the Spanish besieged the Portuguese town of Monsao, on the northern frontier with Galicia, but they were driven off. 1659, the Treaty of the Pyrenees was signed on 7 November 1659, ending Spain long war with France, and Spanish troops were free once more to suppress the Portuguese rebellion. The Spaniards besieged Elvis, and they were driven off by Antonio Luis de Meneses once again. 1660, upon the restoration of Charles II in England, the Queen Regent renegotiated the Treaty of 1654. Portugal was allowed to recruit soldiers and horses in England for the fight against Spain, to seek the conscription of 4,000 mercenaries in Scotland and Ireland, and to charter 24 English ships to carry them. The expeditionary force was issued English weapons upon arrival in Portugal and guaranteed freedom of worship. 1660, the English began to dominate the trade in port wine from Portugal after a political spat with the French denied them Bordeaux wines. Brandy was added to the Portuguese wines to fortify them for the Atlantic voyage. Together with the restoration of Charles II in England, the Port Connection had an increasingly positive influence on Anglo Portuguese relations. 1661 Bombay and Tangier were ceded to England on 23 June 1661 as a dowry for Afonso's sister, Catherine of Braganza, who had married King Charles II of England on 25 May 1661. In addition to the deeds to Bombay and Tangier, Catherine arrived in London, where she popularised the practice of drinking tea, with a dowry of two million gold pieces. Servicing this wedding debt burdened the Portuguese exchequer for the next half century. The marriage with a Protestant monarch was deeply unpopular with those among the Portuguese nobility who favoured alliance with France. An Anglophile party and a Francophile party developed at the Portuguese court, 1661, English mediation induced the Netherlands to acknowledge, on 6 August 1661, Portuguese rule in Brazil, in return for uncontested control of Ceylon and 8 million guilders. This agreement was formalized in the Treaty of The Hague 1661. 1662, shortly after Afonso VI's coming of age, Luís de Vasconcelos e Souza, third Count of Castelo Melhor, saw an opportunity to gain power at court by befriending the mentally deficient king. He managed to convince the king that his mother, Luisa of Medina Sidonia, was plotting to steal his throne and exile him from Portugal. As a result, Afonso asserted his right to rule and dispatched his mother to a convent. The king appointed Castelo Melhor his secret notary Escrivão da Puridade, a position in which Castelo Melhor was able to exercise the functions of first minister. Because of the weakness of the king, Castelo Melhor became the virtual dictator of Portugal. 1662, Castelo Melhor commenced the final successful phase of the Portuguese acclamation war with the aid of the Count of Mertola, who brilliantly commanded the international mercenary army that had been assembled with the assistance of England. 1663, the Battle of Amixiel was fought on 8 June 1663. After they had spent nearly all spring overrunning the south of Portugal, the Spanish army, under John of Austria the Younger, took the Portuguese city of Évora. Less than three weeks later, they were soundly defeated by Sancho Manuel de Valena and Count of Mertola. 1663, the Dutch ousted the Portuguese from the Malabar coast, even though this was a clear violation of their 1661 treaty. 1663, the Siege of Évora occurred when the Portuguese army led by Sancho Manuel de Valena and by the Count of Mertola retook the city from the Spanish occupiers, with little to no casualties. The entire Spanish garrison surrendered. 1664, the Battle of Castelo Rodrigo was fought on 7 July 1664. A regional military commander, Pedro Jacques de Magalhães, defeated the Duke of Osuna. 1664, the Siege of Valencia de Alcántara results in the successful conquest of the Spanish town of Valencia de Alcántara by Portugal in July 1664. 
1665, Portugal was again victorious at the Battle of Montes Claros on the 17th of June 1665, in which Antonio Luis de Meneses and Schomburg defeated the Spanish army under the Marquis of Caracena. Spain ceased hostilities, but a true peace treaty was not signed for another three years. Montes Claros is considered one of the most important battles in Portuguese history. 1666, in an attempt to establish an alliance with France, Castelo Melhor arranged for Afonso VI to marry Marie Francoise of Namur, the daughter of the Duke of Namur, but this marriage would not last long. 1666, the ambitious Castelo Melhor planned to prosecute the war to the extent of taking Galicia and presenting it to the Portuguese crown as a war indemnity, but he was dissuaded. 1667, Marie Francoise petitioned for an annulment of her marriage to Afonso VI, based on the impotence of the king. The church granted her the annulment. 1667, King Afonso VI, Costello Melhor, and his Francophile party were overthrown by the king's younger brother, Pedro, Duke of Beja, who later ruled as Pedro II of Portugal. Pedro first installed himself as his brother. S. Regent and then arranged Afonso's exile to the island of Terceira in the Azores on the pretense that he was incapable of governing. Costello Melhor fled into exile, ironically, he chose to live in England. 1667, the French alliance had been imperiled by the annulment of Afonso's marriage, but Pedro strengthened his political position by marrying his brother's estranged queen. 1668, the Treaty of Lisbon with Spain ended 28 years of war. The Regent of Spain, Mariana of Austria, acting in the name of her young son Charles II of Spain, finally recognized the legitimacy of the Portuguese monarch. Portugal kept all of its remaining overseas colonies, with the exception of Ceuta on the North African coast, who didn't recognize the Braganca dynasty during the war. <laughs> Results of the war Happily for Portugal, its restoration of independence from Spain was clearly established, and it proved that it could fend for itself, albeit with difficulty. Its victories on the battlefield had reawakened Portuguese nationalism. Economically, Portugal's restoration of independence freed it to pursue the course mapped out by the pioneers of commercial imperialism. During the 17th century, its economy depended largely upon entrepot trade in tobacco and sugar, and the export of salt. During the 18th century, even though staples were not abandoned, the Portuguese economy came to be based more upon slaves, gold, leather, and wine. Portuguese trade, centered in the busy port of Lisbon, was most influenced by Anglo-Dutch capitalism and by the colonial economy in Brazil. Luís de Meneses, the Count of Aracera, economic advisor to the Prince Regent, advocated the development of a native textile industry based on a Flemish model. Factories were established at Covila, in an area of central Portugal where there was easy access to flocks of sheep and clean mountain water, but they were highly unpopular with both local consumers and traditional weavers. Meanwhile, Portuguese attempts to develop a silk industry were undercut by the French, who wanted to monopolize that market. More importantly, after 1668, Portugal, determined to differentiate itself from Spain, turned to Western Europe, particularly France and England, for new ideas and skills. This was part of a gradual de-Iberianization, as Portugal consolidated its cultural and political independence from Spain. Portuguese nationalism, aroused by success on the battlefield, produced hostile reactions to Spain and to Spanish things and persons. By this time, Portuguese society was composed of two basic elements, those who participated in the gradual Europeanization process, the political nation, and those who remained largely unchanged, the majority of the people, who remained apolitical and passive. Topic see also topic 1580 Portuguese succession crisis History of Portugal 1640-1777 Monument to the Restorers Restauradores Square topic Notes topic topic References topic Anderson, James Maxwell the History of Portugal Greenwood Press, 2000 ISBN 0-313-31106-4 Birmingham, David. A Concise History of Portugal 2003 ISBN 978-0-521-53686-8 McMurdo, Edward 2010. The History of Portugal, From the Reign of Dijuau II, to the Reign of Dijuau V Vol. 3. Vol. 3. Read Books Design. 
ISBN 9781444695 1694 Riley, Jonathan The Last Ironsides, The English Expedition to Portugal, 1662–1668. Helion and Company. ISBN 978-1909982208. Topic. External links Topic. Guerra da Restrasau